J ハット塾。Please hit subscribe. This problem appears at the qualifying examinations for applicants for Japanese government or MEXT scholarships 2020. This problem is from the 2020 College of Technology Mathematics questionnaire. The answer key and the original questions are linked in the description. For this problem, we are given a plane alpha, which is given by the equation x minus 3y plus z plus 7 equals 0, and a line L. That is perpendicular or normal to alpha and goes through the point 0, 0, for the origin. The problem is to find the intersection between L and alpha. So, for this problem, we will have to review the expression of a line in 3D space and The normal to a plane in 3D space. A line L in 3D space can be expressed in its vector form, parametric form, and symmetric form. We will need a point on the line L and a vector R that is parallel to the line L. If the point P is contained in L and the vector R is parallel to L, then the vector form can be written this way. Here, this bit is the point P, and here we write it as a vector. And then, this part is from the vector parallel to L, so that's ABC, and we have a parameter T here. T can be any real number. In fact, the line is the collection of points for. All the different values of t. The parametric form is actually a rearrangement of the vector form. Here, in the vector form, we have three separate equations that correspond to each component of the vector. So, the x component is actually just x sub o plus the parameter t times a. So that is the first equation here in the parametric form. The same is done for the second component y and the third component z. And now we also notice that we can convert this parametric form easily into the symmetric form by isolating the parameter t. If we move x sub o to the other side and divide everything by a, We notice that that is equal to t. So t equals x minus x sub o all over a. And we do the same thing for the second and the third equations. And we obtain this. And we notice that in fact, this symmetric form is a set of equations. First, this equation between x and y. The second is this equation between y and z. And the third is this equation between x and z. However, only two out of those three are independent equations. And then we have an example here. For example, if we have the point P at the origin to be through some line, and that line is parallel to. The vector r, which is 1, 1, 1, 1, then the vector form is simply this. Here we replaced this bit with this point. So this is the vector from 0 to 0. And then this bit is from this, which is this. And we have the parameter t, which takes all the values from negative infinity to infinity. And simplifying this, we obtain just this. And for the parametric form, All of these values here are 0, and a, b, and c are 1, and so we get this. And then again, we replace these with 0, so the numerators are x, y, and z, and this bit are just all 1, so that's 1, 1, 1. And so this is the symmetric form of our line. Again, our line is just a collection of these points x, y, and z, where t. 
a is varied from negative infinity to infinity. To find the vector normal to a given plane, we just need the equation of the plane. Suppose that the plane P has the equation ax plus bx plus cz plus d equals 0. And therefore, we will have the vector n equals the vector a, b, c. If we let n to be this vector, then we can say that n is normal to p. And this is why. First, we notice that p contains a vector p2, p1, where p2 will be defined as this point here, and p1 will be de defined as this point. And because both p1 and p2 are contained in p, they satisfy these two equations. So if we subtract the second equation from the first equation, we obtain on the right side, let's put it on the left side in this case, so the, the right side here is 0 minus 0, and we get 0. And on this side, we get ax1 minus ax2, we get a times x1 minus x2. And the same for this term and this term, and d minus d is 0, and so we, we lose the constant here. This expression here can now be expressed as the dot product of this vector, abc, and the vector that is given here. We notice that this vector is actually the vector that we define to be n, and this vector here is actually the vector defined to be this vector here. And that means that the dot product of n and this vector is 0, which is equivalent to saying that n is perpendicular to this vector. And because this vector is contained in the plane P, we can say that n is normal to any vector contained in plane P, which is equivalent to saying that the vector T n is normal to the plane P. Here we have T that is not 0. So the only restriction for our T is that it should not be equal to 0. As an example, here we have three different planes. They differ by the value of d. Here we have 1, 10, and here we have some general value for d. These three vectors, or rather planes, will have the same normal vectors because the value of d does not really matter. And so, the normal vectors to these planes are the following. Here, the first vector that we point out is n. n is obtained from the coefficients here, which is 1, 2, and 3. And then, any multiple of n is also normal to these three vectors. And so, here we have 0.1 times n, and 10 times n, and in general, t times n, where t is not equal to 0. The problem tells us that alpha is perpendicular or normal to L. Therefore, we can say that the vector 1 minus 3, 2, which is from the coefficients in the equation for alpha, this vector is parallel to the line L. And then we are also told that the origin is contained in L. From this given and this given, we can now write the symmetric form of the line. So this is the symmetric form of L. So x minus 0, y minus 0, z minus 0, and here we have from this vector. And therefore, the intersection between this line and the plane alpha must satisfy this equation here we have the intersection point to be alpha, beta, or rather a, b, and c, and this equation is from the equation of alpha.
So we replaced x, y, and z with the intersection point a, b, c. And this equation here is from the symmetric form of the line L. And so the intersection point must also satisfy the equation for L. And so we have this. And again, we have two independent equations from this. And the next bit is to solve for alpha, beta, or rather a, b, and c. And to do that, we just replace the b and c here with the b and c here in terms of a. So a equals negative b over 3, and so b is negative 3a. And so we replace b with negative 3a, and that's what we got here. And a equals c over 2, so we replace c with 2a, and that's what we got here. And now we can solve for a in here. A little rearrangement, and we get a to be negative 1 half. And again, from the double star in the previous slide, we also get that b equals negative 3a, so b equals 3 halves. So we just substituted the new found value of a in here. And that's what we got here. And the same is true for c. And for c, we obtain negative 1. And so the intersection, the point of intersection, is negative 1 half, 3 halves, negative 1. If you learned something new today, please help my channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell for the notifications. See ya! Please hit subscribe.